are to blame for the Virginia TV shooting. I want to tweet that out right now. MSNBC and CNN contributed to this shooting by pushing race war, not the Second Amendment. I don't know how you put that all into a tweet. The problem is condensing it. CNN, no, MSNBC and Dinosaur Media are responsible for pushing race war and causing this latest shooting, not the Second Amendment. I want to tweet that at Real Alex Jones because that's what this comes down to. Okay, I'm ranting. Uh, who's up first here, John? Who's been holding the longest? Kyvik in Canada, you're up first. Thank you for calling in today. Hi, Alex. Can you hear me? I sure can. Go ahead. Well, greetings once again from Canada, Alex. Thanks for taking my call again, and thanks to you and your whole crew for all your good works. Thank you. Uh, and and I, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed Toronto Island. It is a beautiful place, isn't it? I'm going to bring my kids back up there. Very beautiful. I really like Toronto. Yeah, it's a, it's a great town. It really is. Uh, now, talking about this shooting, as a Canadian, I can assure you that handgun restrictions will not stop crazy or stupid people from shooting other people. It's almost impossible in Canada to get a CCW, and yet there's still handgun shootings every single week up here. Wait a minute. So Are you not, saying that spoons don't make people fat? Uh, you know, and yeah. alcohol doesn't make people crash into trees. Apparently. <laughs> well, I mean, it's so obvious and, you know, that Rosie O'Donnell's not to blame for being fat. It is the fact that spoons in her cupboard made her eat all that food. Same thing with Michael Moore. Absolutely. And, you know, I think this became such a big story so quickly because it's the first time since Bud Dwyer and Christine Chubbuck killed themselves on live TV, and we now have the Internet to stoke the flames. Oh, yeah, this is going to be the biggest news story for a few weeks, and it's going to distract. That's why I'm sending... Joe Biggs and David Knight right now on an airplane. The problem is it takes two hours once they get to an airport to get out there. So they won't be out there till like 10 o'clock tonight. But the rest of the mainstream media won't get there until this afternoon. So we're going to be there covering the media spectacle and their propaganda. And also getting questions in on real issues like was he on psychotropic drugs? I mean, Because the cops will want to tell us. Uh, we're going to be there talking to the police. That's what Joe Biggs is being sent to do, along with David Knight, and, and to really do real journalism. Cover what the media is doing, cover what the Democratic operatives are doing, and then talk to the police and others and get the scoop. Was this guy on psychotropic drugs? You know, do bears go to the bathroom in the woods? Uh, do Tweety Birds sing? Uh, I mean, every time I, I predict they're on it, they always are. What do you think the chances are this guy wasn't on some drugs? Oh, no, all you got to do is look at his pictures and read his tweets and whatnot. This guy was unhinged. He was completely unhinged. You know, as this was going on, there was a bunch of me and another, a whole bunch of info warriors in an, uh, an info wars IRC chat room, uh, which, by the way, I think you should get rid of the comment sections on the articles and put a live chat or a link uh, or a login to Planet Info Wars so we can have real-time conversations because the, the, the comment sections have just become chaos since the David Duke interview. It's just complete nonsense. Well, that's actually good, though. That just brings us more traffic, and, and, and I like that controversy. Um, I mean, if people think me giving somebody two hours on air to put out their ideas of censorship, good. I mean, I want to have that type of mental illness attack me. They don't understand how the Internet works or how metrics work. Uh, it's uh, really helping the site, so I'm actually quite thankful for it. I hope it intensifies, actually. The traffic's really helping us uh, with our click rates with our sponsors. Yes. Rob in Maine. Ben in Missouri. Robert, Missouri. Buckley in Missouri. Missouri, Missouri, Missouri. We're going to be going to all of you. 800 259 9231 here in just a moment. But I got to mention this news. You can probably find, I don't want to exaggerate, 5,000 news articles. So we're like 3,000 in one week one time because AP got republished everywhere saying that there was no plan to use drones to surveil you, no plan to weaponize drones, even as it was being announced by law enforcement federally, state and local, in the last five, six years. They would have articles going, Alex Jones and Infowars.com are liars. There is no plan to surveil you, no plan to surveil farmers, 
and what they're planting or what they do with drones. No plan to weaponize them. Matt Drudge then ran the lying article of InfoWars and put out the horrible disinformation. And that's because they didn't want to debate about it before they rolled it out. They've since had Houston crash drones. They've tested armed drones. Uh, and then look, it makes perfect sense if you got a suspect held up or whatever and not send cops in to get killed to send in a drone. The problem is then they'll get rid of humans altogether and have nothing but drones, and then that doesn't have human decision-making in it. And the globalists that have a technocracy, they can program and control, and that's why they're going there. When I flew to Canada, they gave us on the airplane uh, the National Post on, on Canada Air. And that's the big national paper of Canada, obviously. And, and the cover story was, and I meant to bring it back, but I left it on the plane. Maybe you guys can pull it up. That The headline was, as roads go driverless, insurance companies may be thing of the past. And the article's like, yeah, it's going to save you money and there's going to be, because of the insurance, there's still going to be insurance. They're just going to phase you out of your car, having it be higher because you're, quote, not as good a driver as the driverless car. They've said this a decade ago. And then there'll be a lower tax and fees and all the rest of it. It's the insurance companies owned by the big banks that are running this. So, again, try to pull that up, nationalpost.com. Just say National Post in the search box and then type in driverless vehicles will lower insurance rates. And that should pull it up, or I can try it. But the reason I get into that is here's this new article. First state legalizes taser drones for cops thanks to a lobbyist. North Dakota, the Daily Beast. So it's crowd control, folks. Here's one out of the Wall Street Journal. And this will illustrate everything. Before a robot takes your job, you'll be working side by side. So cops... Before a robot or a drone takes your job, you'll be working side by side. Fighter pilots, before a drone takes your job, you'll be working side by side. And again, people can say, well, that's just the natural move of technology, and technology usually empowers, not enslaves. I agree with that, except now, under the technocracy, this is being done specifically. You guys found that National Post story? I get an obsession with this. I've got to find it. You guys are awesome. You usually find stuff so quick. Let me see if I can do it. Are you searching web or are you searching news? We can see. All right. I, I would try to search news. Um, let, me you, let me try to give you the exact headline. Sometimes it's different in the paper than online. And sometimes the stories that are in the paper aren't online. As roads go driverless, it's just a foregone conclusion, insurance companies may be obsolete. National Post. Or just do driverless cars, National Post, click news. Doesn't matter. I'm just putting it out for everybody else so they can find it as well. So that's where this is going. This is being done to displace humanity. This is being done as a decision, as a planned architecture. Like you build a big building. It's being built in that we're obsolete. That's a crime. This gives incredible centralized control. That's why it's a problem. Of course, there's arguments for all of it. But you notice they're trying to get laws passed to restrict citizens from having drones, where, again, only the system has it. So there's that as well. Uh, let's go to Rob in Maine. Rob, you're on the air. Hi, Alex. I want to make a couple of points here. This guy... Uh the shooter and the, the mind control drugs that, that have been used. But uh, first, I'd like to say uh, thank God for Larry Nichols and the Clinton Chronicles. Uh, as a public access TV producer, I have ran that film three or four times over the years, done this for 12 years. And uh, I'd like to say, Mr. and Mrs. America, you got to see that film, the Clinton Chronicles. So... I loved your rant on Hillary this morning, or earlier. That was great. I can't stand seeing those people. And then the Bushes coming back, too, these two dynasties. It just makes me sick. But this shooter definitely looks like a Manchurian candidate. All the hallmarks of it, you know, the way they worked in the, the race angle, as well as the, you know, the random shooting. And, yes, he'll be on a psychotropic drug or something, but... um 
there is one point that I kind of been bothering me. The Suboxone, there was a picture of it earlier on one of the articles that you were showing. Uh, it's a Suboxone. And that, I don't believe that is really in that class of drugs. Uh, I, I had to use that myself for a couple of years to get off of pills that I got uh, hooked when I went to the dentist on Vicodin and stuff. And uh, they use that to wean people off of uh, opiates. And um, so it, it's it's like an opiate, but they tell you you can't get high on it. Of course, but, people but it has an it. amnesic effect for a lot of people. Uh, I I really couldn't say that may be true, but I don't. It's, I'm pretty sure it's not in the same class as uh, these other things like uh, the uh, serotonin reuptake inhibitors. No, it's not. Uh, so, yeah, it's more like an opiate itself. It's kind of like that uh, it replaced the old uh, sure. methadone. So, yeah. Uh, that was my point on that. Suboxone, I think there's a little confusion about that. But, yeah, this guy looks like a Manchurian candidate all the way because uh, I think 95% of these guys are. Well, we know that the shooter in Colorado was. We have all the proof. It's stunning they did it, just like Sirhan Sirhan. He told the jailers that. He told people in the cell next that I'm drugged. I'm part of a secret government program. I don't know what happened. Help me. And then the feds grabbed him. Um and then he was in a secret government program It came out. He was given almost $100,000 a year by the feds. His dad was in a super secret program. He was under a top Air Force psychiatrist. They knew it was going to happen. He was totally shut up. I don't think he was even the shooter. Thank you for the call. Great points. By the way, let me add one more chapter to this, and I'm going back to your calls. Before a robot takes your job, you will be working side by side with one, Wall Street Journal. And it goes through the studies from Foster Research breaking all of this down in an Oxford paper and a bunch of other major studies. Well, here's Lancaster Online. Uber to work with U of A on mapping self-driving cars. Uber to work with them to basically phase out their own drivers. See, it, when, when Uber first came out a few years ago, I didn't think it through because I didn't know that Rahm Emanuel's brother, Ezekiel Emanuel, has a $100 million investment in it and has already made $2 billion. That hadn't happened yet. I didn't know that they were exempt from all the laws. But what they do all over the world in mainly liberal or socialist cities with mayors is they come in and give them massive money. They give money to the local political group. They keep all the regulations on the taxi drivers for multi-hundred thousand dollar a year medallions to be able to operate. All the regulations, all the controls, can only drive 10 hours a day, have to pay these huge fees when you go to the airport. But then Uber is allowed to bypass all of that. So see, it's not privatization. It's not competition. Even though I can't stand a lot of the cab drivers and how corrupt they are and the mafia connections there. But that's a smaller, older mafia, generally. They are set there to not be able to make profits, to still pay all the taxes. And then insider groups that own Uber, they are allowed to do things that the other companies like Uber aren't allowed to either. They're the designated winner. They're the ones that get left alone everywhere but Paris, France, San Francisco, you name it. They come in, they're above the law, they don't have to pay the taxes, they don't have to pay the regulations, but then the cab drivers do, and then you hear from the owner, the CEO, the founder of Uber, that, oh, we're going to have all the cars be Uber, we want a monopoly, and we're going to dominate Google, and we're going to have driverless cars. And then you understand what it's about, and you find out governments are involved with them as the knighted, bespoke touched above the law group that is then going to be given the driverless car franchise. And there'll be a few other subsidiaries owned by the very same people. Then there's the war over your future driverless car service has begun. Uber's acquisition of 100 Microsoft mapping engineers puts Google in the crosshairs. You see, they want to be the new Google. They've said that. But it won't be a person opening the car door for you. And they're allowed to make super massive profits because they are exempt from all the other rules that they themselves 
their controllers have put in place. And then no matter what you do, they stay above the law.